Okay, I got the, the gauge in place. I put the switch back in place. Uh, you know, I, of course, I taped up all the NPTs. And I put this little elbow here, uh, figuring that uh, maybe if I have a little more space between the bottom of the pipe and the bottom of the gauge, I won't get as much crud in the orifice of the gauge there. It seems like these things only last a couple years. You know, you can see they don't start, they stop working, they, they sort of stick. Uh, but anyway, I put it like that. We'll see if it works or not. Again, this is brand new. I recommend if you, uh, you know, do anything like this. This is like a, you know, $27 unit, this switch here. And you can see from the prior scene that it gets all clogged up. You could probably attempt to clean it, but, uh, you know, my guess is if I replace this here, uh, it'll probably last me another 20 years because I know we've been in the house for 20 years or 30 years and uh, I never replaced it, so uh, it lasted pretty long. So if I get a new one, I should be good to go uh, for a while. So I did reuse this tee. I don't see any problem with it. If you want to, great. If you don't, get a new tee. Uh, the valve here, the shutoff valve, I put that in not too long ago. Um, it seems to be working. If it was tight, if it was leaky, I would replace that too. And again, this stuff should all be uh, pretty much where it's supposed to be. I will uh, put my uh, air gauge on this. I got a 4060 regulator, so this should be about uh, 38 psi. So before I take it downstairs, I will top it off to 38 psi just to make sure we're in the right uh, zip code there. Uh, you want it at a couple psi less than your kick on pressure. So. 40 minus a couple is uh, 38 so okay let me get this thing set up and uh, soon we'll have water nice thing is I got this uh, did this early in the morning the kids are sleeping uh, hopefully they don't even know we don't have water so I don't know so this takes a lot of air so if you got to do this by hand without an air compressor uh, you're going to be loving that. So, anyway, 40 psi's kick on, so I'm going to set this about yeah, 38 psi. So, a little high. And the theory behind it is, you got 40 psi to turn on. You want a little bit of air in there, or sorry, you want a little bit of water in there. You don't want it to be totally empty so 38 psi uh, is a good number because when it's a 40 there's probably going to be like an inch or so of water in there right so that's that's the theory behind it you don't want this to be above 40 and the pump turns out at 40 because there'll be no water in the system it, it will turn on don't get me wrong but there won't be any reservoir in the bladder okay that's good enough I'll probably adjust a low pressure a little bit above 40 anyway at some time, but uh, for now we're good to go. So I got the tank back in place. I put a couple of these, uh, you know, two by what they, whatever, one and a half by whatever uh, blocks. So now it looks like I need to cut a little bit more off of, uh, you know, I want to put this union in here. So I'll probably have to cut a little bit more of this pipe off, which is good because, uh, you know, it's easier to cut it off than at it. Uh, you know, my wiring is going to pop right back in there, not a problem. And uh, I already popped this one back on. These are quick connects. These PEX things are pretty uh, sweet. So. And you can see now with the gauge here, uh, you know, it makes it pretty nice to see the pressure. And again, hopefully it keeps the gauge from clogging up. So let me uh, set this up for plumbing, or yeah, set this up for uh, soldering. And uh, we're on the home stretch here. This is looking good. So. so I use my Scotch-Brite. 
right? Piece of cake. Clean this stuff up real good. Uh, clean the inside of the fittings up real good too. Uh, I test fit everything together and, and uh, I had the thing out of orientation just a little bit so I don't need to uh, cut the pipes. That's a good thing. So we're setting up to do the soldering. By all means, don't forget to put the nut on. Put that on first. I mean, throw it on the pipe, do whatever you want to do. Uh, that way when you do the soldering, it's on there. Because believe me, I've done it wrong a couple times. And that's half the fun, right? If you do it wrong, you always have a chance to do it over. Oh boy, what fun. So we got our uh, paste, flux, whatever you want to call it. And we're using uh, no lead solder, so I mean, use whatever you got to use. This stuff has a little bit of uh, lead in it, I guess. I don't know. The more you prep the joint, the better off you'll be. So, this is uh, by far the most important step for, uh, you know, soldering. And this union doesn't have a, a O-ring seal or anything with it. It's a copper to copper seal, so you don't have to worry about uh, melting it. Most of the time you would take it out, quite honestly. And I'm putting the big one on top, the heavier one. I don't know if it makes a difference. I don't know, just what I'm doing. And what I will do is uh, get this all screwed together here. I guess I'll just do the top one right there. I can do the bottom one too. It's just hand tightened here. You don't want to do it in free space. You know, you want to keep this nut on because you know the thing needs to be assembled. So you want to solder pretty much in position. Thank you. 
It looks like it got soldered the whole way around in that thing. Now the bottom one should be a piece of cake, right? try it. I am not the best solder person in the world, so the only way you get good at it is if you do it again and again and again. And the few times I do it, I wouldn't say I'm the best, but I'll look at this, fiddle with it, and uh, I'll get it right. So let me hook up the electric, and uh, we're going to see what happens here. Come on. Okay, so we got that all wired back up. If you look at the cap here uh, for this motor controller, you know, leg one goes on the left, leg two goes on the right. So they want the, it doesn't matter, but you should do what it says. So. The blacks are on one side, the reds are on the other side, just like we took it off. But leg one, you know, from your power box, this is our power box here, power wire. That's going to go to the far left, and the red's going to go to the far right. Uh, and again, the black for the motor is going to go on the left, inner left, and the red for the motor is going to go on the inner right. So we are ready to go here. Let me just tighten these stupid things up. Okay, with any electrical work, the most two most important wires to hook up are these ground wires. So do that first. I didn't show doing it, but do that first by all means before you hook anything else up. That is, uh, that is the most important thing you can do. Let's fire it up. Oops. I forgot to tighten this up. Jump it ahead a little bit, I guess. It 
Should be kicking off here. It's supposed to kick off at 60, so. Oh, sorry, I'm only at 50. Okay. That wasn't too bad. If I would have tightened that, that would have been great. I didn't tighten it. You can see it dripping right there. Got my trusty wrenches. Now when you tighten these things, you want to, this has some flats on it, you want to hold on to this too. Still leaking. Oh boy. Uh, is not doing it. Let's see what I did wrong. There we go. I got it. I just needed a little more uh, violence. I had to put two pipe wrenches on it. 